Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this, se this uh, session, actually, it's a little bit of a birthday party. So uh, you have to um, sing along. <laughs> sing along. <laughs> and I'd like to, uh, I was thinking, uh, what can we characterize as the uh, creation, the uh, success of a center like this? So I'd like to um, briefly tell you uh, an incident of how we started the ARC. There was this 40-year-old uh, 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 bearded, is there anything out there? Uh, what, what are you guys watching? Stop, stop it. <laughs> stop it right there. <laughs> I'm talking, okay, thank you. So there was this 40-year-old uh, bearded black uh, 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 fellow uh, who uh, was just uh, appointed as the department chair of mechanical engineering at the University of Michigan. And uh, he decided that um, he needed to see if automotive engineering was really something that we were doing as well as we should be doing, as uh, Paul Rogers would say. And so um, I started asking around, what are we actually doing? And there was this uh, uh, professor who sits right here, Professor Don Pearson, and he said, well, look, um, Let's go over to uh, Detroit one day. And I say, okay, sure, why? Well, you know, there's this place. Um, it's the Detroit Arsenal. And there's some people there that actually do some automotive stuff. I said, okay. He says, I'll drive. So uh, we started and uh, we went uh, uh, to what I now know to be Tardeg. And uh, I was introduced to another fellow who's also sitting right here, uh, Dr. Walt Breisek. And I say, I'm so-and-so, I'm Hannes Papalambros, and I'm um, professor at the university. And he says, huh, I know another Papalambros, but she's tall, blonde, and good looking. <laughs> And at that moment, I knew that this is a partnership that's going to start <laughs> on a, and last for a long time because, of course, there, there is a tall, blonde, good-looking uh, Papa Lambers, who's my wife, who at the time um, had uh, graduated from U of M and wor was working at Detroit Diesel Allison uh, doing ceramic coatings on adiabatic diesel engines. And she and Walt happened to have gone to uh, the Pentagon for a presentation getting money uh, for support of their programs. And I didn't know Walt, and you know, my wife wasn't talking to me about who she meets. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> so that's kind of how this thing started. And the timing was interesting, because I was looking for what we should do from the university side. Uh, recognize now we're talking about 1993, roughly. And uh, looking at the scene, uh, the national scene, the, the Berlin Wall was down. Uh, there was a lot of talk about dual use technology and how all our uh, uh, military research could support the national competitiveness. It was a different time, right? So I was thinking about that. And then I uh, started talking with Walt and his colleagues at Tardek, uh, particularly Al Farkas. I realized that they were ready to, uh, they were actually putting out a BAA, a broad agency announcement, to create an automotive center whose goal would be dual use technology, leveraging the, um, the work that's done in the automotive industry and in the military for the benefit of both. So it was timing was really good. My problem though was that what they had put together as a BAA was too big for Michigan, at least at the time we were talking. So I needed to find some partners. And uh, so what I did was I called a couple of people. Uh, one of them was Ed Haug, Professor Ed Haug at the University of Iowa, who was a really big shot. Uh, he was running the big uh, uh, DOT simulator, uh, $100 million facility, et cetera, et cetera. But I happened to have known him through our ASME activities. And so I called Ed, and he says, oh, I'm glad you called, because I was going to call you. Uh, he said, this, uh, this BA is too big for Iowa to do by itself. 
And I said, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And so being friends, we decided that let's put something together. And then we contacted uh, the Wayne State folk. Naeem, did I see you somewhere? Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we talked about their work in, um, in uh, uh, diesel engine work. And so we gradually uh, developed this partnership. And one of the things that was very important uh, later on for the success was that we had clear understanding of what the partnership is, including how much money everybody was going to get. And you think it's trivial, but it's not. And I recall, Naeem, one meeting we had uh, to try to sort this out. And uh, the Wayne State uh, brought big guns like VPs for research or something and um, uh, argued in the meeting that, look, we're going to do all this work for your center. We need a bigger piece of the budget. And so I said, well, just don't do all this work. <laughs> just do as much work as you get paid for. And that sounds kind of funny, but it is true that we had to have some really clear agreements of how these partnerships are going to work and be honest about it up front. The story of the, the, the moral of this story is that these things happen because people have relationships, uh, particularly relationships that build trust or build on trust. And that's really necessary for launching and sustaining a large center like this for a long time. Now, this, the sustaining part. Uh, is also important. And I want to uh, sort of single out a couple of things that helped us sustain uh, the program. One is that the center started with some basic uh, uh, thrust areas which were generic enough to be able to evolve, but specific also enough to have some things to do. So it's important to have the flexibility of adapting as you go. So adaptability was a key element of success in the center because things change. What, what the military or the uh, national uh, uh, sort of policy was in 1993-94 is very different than it was today. And it changed for many reasons. So the center needed to adapt. However, we never compromised the uh, requirement that this was a basic research center. And this is uh, not so easy, actually, because a lot of the pool that, uh, that came from uh, TARDIC and national policy would sometimes require us or ask us to do things that I would consider consulting work. And uh, we were able to resist it uh, politely, but also with a strong support from what I would call guardian angels within TARDIC. And, uh, uh, Walt was the first one. Dave Gorsuch now is the current one. But there were others who were able to kind of translate for their leadership what the ARC as a center does and why it shouldn't solve that particular problem because some vehicle was breaking down all the time and we were supposed to fix that. So that was the, 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 the important thing was the adaptability but staying true to basic uh, sort of principles, if you like. Uh, the other thing is, again, what, I, uh, what started the center, the, the people. So the people uh, in the ARC uh, were, all, were all selfish in our own ways. But we never, I think, none of the people that were involved in the ARC from the beginning until today used the ARC as their sole vehicle of promotion. And you see that in how the jobs from the director of the center to uh, uh, the thrust leaders and so forth, how these jobs evolved and were given to other people, new people. Uh, even though uh, some of us are still here and working in the center and getting projects uh, done, we don't run things anymore. And that this is important. Right? You have to let go of something good and let the next uh, sort of group of people take over. So I think, if I may say, as far as success of the center, these two things were the most important to me elements. And I'm personally uh, very proud for what has been done, and I'm also thankful 
to uh, the people that I work with, both within the center, the academic institutions, and at Tardec. So with that, thank you.